Hello friends and welcome to a lecture on operation research. Today we will be learning how to solve a traveling salesman problem. This is Professor Arvind Prasad. In a traveling salesman problem, the salesman has to travel cities A, B and C. He has to not revisit any city, that is no city should be revisited and he has to take the shortest possible itinerary. He can start with A, then visit C, then go to B or he can start with A, then go to B and then finally go to C. Well for that matter he can start from any city, the result would be the same. The cost of travels from cities to cities is given in the table. If you want to travel from city number 1 to city number 2, the cost of travel is going to be C12. If you wish to travel from city number 2 to let us say city number N, the cost of travel is going to be 2N. Similarly, if you want to travel from city N to city number 2, the cost of travel is going to be CN2. Now let's have a look at the mathematical formulation of the problem. If the salesman travels from a city i to a city j, x i j will be 1, otherwise it's going to be 0. And the cost index to travel from city i to the same city i, we will take it as infinity. That is because we wish to avoid this cost. The reason being simple that the travel to the same city is not permitted. Travel from city to the same city is just not permitted, it is just not there. So we have to minimize the function z which will be summation of i1 to n, j1 to n, c i j, x i j. Let's go back to the table. Let us say if the salesman travels from city number 2 to city number 1. In this case x21 will be 1 and c21 will be the cost. So the cost of travel from city 2 to city 1 if it has to be added to its itinerary it's going to be nothing but c21 multiplied by 1. That 1 is nothing but x21 is equal to 1. C11 should be set to infinity, C22 should be set to infinity and CNN should also be set to infinity. Also, if we sum up any row, that is if we sum up the x values in any row, it has to be 1 because from city number 1, we can only travel to one city at one time. So it necessarily has to be 1. Similarly, the sum of x in the column also should be 1. So there we are, summation i 1 to n, x i j is 1 and summation j 1 to n, x i j is also 1. Also in the mathematical formulation we have to understand that this problem is similar to an assignment problem of dimension n into n. How do we solve assignment problems of dimension n to n? It is given in the link above in the video. Also if x i j is equal to 1 that is if the salesman has traveled from city i to city j, then it automatically may, means that x j i should be equal to 0. That is because we are going to visit the city only once. If we travel from city number 2 to city number 3, we have to see that in our itinerary we do not end up traveling city from city 3 to city 2. This means we are traveling to city 2 back we are revisiting CT2, which has to be avoided. 
Now, how to solve a traveling salesman problem is best demonstrated by solving a problem. So here's the problem on your screen. A salesman wants to visit cities 1, 2, 3 and 4. He does not want to visit any city twice before completing the tour of all the cities and wishes to return to his home city or the starting city. That is, at the end, he wins, wants to come back to the same city where he has started from. The cost of going from one city to another city is in rupees is given in the table. Find the least cost route. Now in this table, you have to understand that traveling from city 1 to city 1, the cost is kept as 0. Now traveling from city 2 to city 2, also the cost has kept 0. Before solving it, you will have to convert it into infinity. Well, it is kept 0 because it is logical that if you have to travel from a city to the same city, the cost is going to be 0. If you wish to travel or if the salesman wishes to travel from city number 2 to city number 3, the cost is going to be 140 rupees. If the salesman wants to travel from city number 4 to city number 2, the cost is going to be 80 rupees. Now, how do you solve this problem? The first thing that you do is replace the zeros in the diagonal element with infinity. That's the first thing you need to do. And then afterwards, starting with row number one, you have to find the least cost entry in the row. Now, this is in row number one, 30. You have to reduce this from the other cost entries. So 50 minus 30 will be 20, 50 minus 80 will be, uh, sorry, 80 minus 30 will be 50. Now, how do you solve this problem? The first thing that you have to do is replace the zeros in the diagonal elements with infinity. The second step is start with the topmost row and find the least cost entry. Now this is 30 in row number 1. Reduce it from the other elements. So 50 minus 30 will make it 20 and 80 minus 30 will make it 50. Similarly, in row number 2, the least cost entry is 30. So 40 minus 30 is 10 and 140 minus 30 is 110. We do the similar in all the other rows. And this is the table we get. Now we observe this table critically and we find out if there is zero in each and every column. As we find here in column number three, we do not have a zero. So what do we do here? We find the least cost entry in the column and reduce it from the other cost elements. So the least cost entry here is 50. 50 minus 60 makes it 10. And 110 minus 50 makes it 60. So finally we get this table. So this step is known as matrix reduction. The next step is known as box and crosses. Well, boxing is also known as assignment. What we do here is we assign zeros. We do an assignment to a zero and we cross our zeros. So the cross zeros are not assignments. Well, I'll explain it now shortly. What we do is we analyze the rows and we find the row in which there is a single zero entry. This is row number two. So we box that zero. That is we have done an assignment to that zero. Right. So travel from city number two to city number four now is assigned. 
that is the meaning of it now what we do is we analyze the column in which this zero that has been assigned is there we analyze that column and do we find any zero in that yes we do find a zero in that so therefore we cross it off okay now after that what we do is we again analyze further all the rows and do we find any lone zero entry in any row yes it is in row number four so we box it having done this operation through all the rows now we start analyzing the columns now column number one we find that the zero has been assigned so we leave that and go ahead now we go to column number two the zero here is unassigned so we assign it now since this zero has been assigned we check out for any zero which is passing in, in the row which is passing through this zero because now we are taking the columns so we have to analyze the rows and we have to analyze if there is any zero in that or not yes there is a zero now we cross it now what we find in this table that all these zeros have either been assigned or they have been crossed now we go ahead with the ticking algorithm first we tick or we mark the row that is not having any assignment well if you see row number three it doesn't have any assignment the zero here is crossed it is not assigned so we mark it then we mark the column that has zeros in the marked row the zero in the row number three is in column number four so we mark column number four now we take column number four and we find out if any zero has been assigned in that or not so the zero here is in column number four but row number two so we mark row number two because it is assigned we mark rows which have an assignment in the marked columns so that is the rule yes that is done then afterwards we draw lines through all unmarked rows okay now drawing the line unmarked rows are row number four and row number one so row number four and row number one and we also draw, draw line through the marked column okay there we are so we draw a line through the marked column now what do we find we find that the lines that we have drawn they are covering up all the zeros okay this is the final point at which we should be checking we have done things correctly or not that the number of lines that we have drawn after marking the number of lines that we have drawn or the lines we have drawn is covering up all the zeros line in row number one line in row number four and column uh, line in column number four they are going through all the zeros right so this is the check that we have done the box and crosses and the ticking algorithm correctly after we are done with all this that is the box and crosses and the ticking and drawing the lines we should analyze we are getting an optimal solution or not now how do we analyze that the number of lines passing through all the zeros is less than the number of rows and columns that is what we have got here right we have three lines passing through all the zeros but we have four rows or columns now in this case if the number of lines passing is less than the dimension of the table it is not an optimal solution so we have to repeat this process right now do we have to repeat the process on the entire table the answer is no we don't have to repeat the process on the entire table we have to only look at what are the cells through which lines have not cut now it is 10 60 20 30 
that is cell 2 1 cell 2 3 cell 3 1 cell 3 2 lines have not gone through these cells so we have to analyze these cells and we have to find which is the least cost least entry so this is 10 now we have to take this least entry and reduce it from other all, all other entries so we will get 50 here we will get 20 here and we will get 10 here so there we are now what we have to do is we have to again do our boxes and crosses and we have to go through our ticking algorithm and we have to also draw the lines so let's go ahead let's do with this so the first row that doesn't okay so we go with the assignment first so the first row which has a lone zero is row number three so there we are then afterwards we have to find the column which has the assigned zero so it is column number four now we cross off the zero in this right after that we again have a lone zero in row number four so we box it assign it then we have to cross off the zero in column number one and we do that now we have to start analyzing columns we have analyzed all the rows we have to again start analyzing all the columns so we have to box the zero in column number two and we have to cross that in column number three so we are done now we start with the ticking algorithm now we have to tick row number two because it has no assignment so there we are after that we have to tick column number four because it has an assignment and it has an assignment in the zero which is in row number two similarly the zero in row number two which is in column number one now we analyze column number one and do we find any assignment there yes the assignment is in row number four column number one so we tick column number one right now having done this what do we do now now we have to find the rows through which an assignment now assignment has been done in the marked columns so row number four has an assignment in marked column one and row number three also has it so we tick these rows now we draw lines the algorithm for this has been discussed already and what do we find that again the lines are less than the dimension so what do we do now we again look to the cells where the cutting has not been done using the lines which have not been cut by the lines now we look at these cells that is 50 20 10 10 so we find the least value 10 so we arbitrarily take any 10 now you are, you are you have to remember one thing you have to arbitrarily take any 10 and you have to start off so we start off with this 10 and this will be 10 this will be 40 and this will be 0 and this will be 0 okay so this is 10 and 10 so it is equal i can take either of the 10s and start off it doesn't make any difference whatsoever so this is going to be 0 this is going to be 0 this is going to be 10 and this is going to be 40 so here we get the table now and I have already done the box and crosses. The algorithm for this has already been discussed. So it no more needs not be discussed once again for sake of brevity. Now what do we find here? Now we find here that each and every row has one assignment and each and every column has one assignment now is it different from the columns that we had got previously the answer is yes as you can see here there are only three assignments here right so it is yes we do have one assignment per row column now this is the optimal solution because if we want to draw lines we will have to draw four lines to cover all these zeros so it's going to be one line in row number one one line in row number two one line in row number three and one line in row number four 
Well, if you do it column ways, column number one, one line, column number two, one line, column number three, one line, and column number four, one lines. So this is the optimal solution. Now, what is going to be the cost of travel? The cost of travel obviously is going to be the cost value in the assigned cell, that is cell 21, cell 13, cell 34, and cell 42. So we have taken up these costs from the first table that we had. So it's 40 plus 80 plus 80 plus 20. So it's 220 rupees. Well, this has been a long lecture. I can understand that. But then this is the complete way of taking up a problem, an assignment problem and solving it. As you see, I have taken the iterative process till I have reached the optimal solution. So this is the way we solve an assignment problem. If you like my lecture, do press the bell icon and subscribe my channel. And of course, share the link to other students who might be interested. Goodbye, friends. Have a great time. Have a great day.